What up, YouTube? Back at it again, starting a brand new storytelling series. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. After dying, God informs you that hell is a myth and that everyone's sin is okay. Instead of the dead are sorted into six houses of seven based on the sins they choose. We arrive first at the House of Lust. House is a misleading term. It was more of a camp, spread over acres and acres of lush forest. There was a white sandy beach, nude of course, full of copulating couples. There were little cabins sprinkled all along the path from which orgasmic moans regular come came a belting about. Men with six-pack abs and women with perky breasts strolled by without even noticing me and God. They only had eyes for each other, tickling and pinching each other's with flirtatious giggles. What do you think? God asked as we passed a 19-way taking place in the pool of champagne. Little cherubs flittered overhead, armed with mops and cleaning supplies. Thankfully, lust is our most popular sin. I, I, the supermodels like figures of a couple passing nearby and could easily see why. You can never look however you want. Hell, you can be whoever, whatever gender you want. No fetish is too taboo and no desire can be denied here. It was quite tempting, but I was ready to make a permanent decision here. Let's see the others, I told God. We carried on to greed. We passed the rows and rows of mansions, each more opulent than the next. Some of them were so large that they would have had enough rooms to fit my entire town in so many different styles. One second, we were in a beautiful French vineyard in front of a gorgeous chateau with the Alps in the background. The next second, a warm tropical beach with the modern mansion atop breathtaking cliffs. After that, a ski chalet in the Colorado with the roaring fire in a hearth large enough to fit on an ox. Each one had various Italian sports cars and Rolls Royce parked in front with occasional smatterings of boats, helicopters, etc. Any material desire you ever wanted, God explained. Your own world where you have everything. You want the Hope Diamond? You can fly to Washington, D.C. in your own solid gold helicopter and buy it from the Smithsonian. Hell, you could just buy the Smithsonian. Also tempting, but I decided to keep looking. Gluttony was up next. Tables and tables of the very finest foods. Beautiful steaks cooked medium rare. Butter poached lobster tail. French oysters on a half shell. Exotic wines and dusty bottles that had been got hiding in the cellars of the world's finest restaurants. Everyone had a glass of champagne in hand and simply lounged on couches and chairs near the tables eating endlessly. As soon as inhabitants took a bite, the food just instantly came back. My mouth watered even watching them. In every other house, the food is particularly sawdust compared to gluttony, God explained. You have truly experienced heaven until you've been to gluttony. I shook my head, and we kept moving. Sloth was as you'd expect, an endless sea of soft, softest mattresses stacked with cushions and pillows that made the story of the princess and the pea seem minimalist. Little angels visited each resident, giving them messages that made them all melt into their blankets. Wrath was, well, a lot what I'd expect hell to be like. Fire, brimstone, whips, torture, you know, the works. Except here you weren't the one being tortured. Everyone's enemy you'd ever made in real life was now under your thumb. Lots of people chose their fathers, God explained. Lots of grudges against parents in general, you know. But you are not limited to that. Some beat you out for a big promotion back on earth. Take your pound of flesh here. Then we arrived at Envy. It looked, well, a lot like home. Go on, God said. Gesturing towards the door, I turned the knob and walked in and found Emily waiting outside. She ran towards forward, 
wrapped her arms around my neck, and planted a kiss right on my lips. Welcome home, honey. I looked back towards God. Oh, don't be coy, he said. You have no secrets from me. We all know that you were in love with your best friend's wife. She didn't seem to hear him at all. She went back into the hall. We all know that you just settled for your own wife while secretly pining after her. Well, this is your chance to live happily ever after. I peered into the kitchen. Emily was baking something, wearing nothing but an apron. Her curly hair fell softly over her shoulder as she whisked ingredients. She turned back, noticing I was observing her, and an enthusiastic smile spread across her face. It's what you always wanted, it isn't it? God whispered in my ear. I wanted to take it, goddammit, I wanted to take it, but I shook my head. God seemed puzzled. You need to make a decision, he told me. I haven't seen pride yet. He scoffed. No one ever wants pride, trust me. Well, I want to see it. Pride was boring. Just a row of work benches in a bare white room. I don't get it, I told God. Yeah, no one does, he answers. That's why no one ever chooses it. Doesn't cavorting in lust sound better than sitting here in the building little trinkets for the rest of eternity? Would you rather gorge yourself in gluttony or spend time with Emily in envy? I considered the options again. I picked pride, I finally told him. He narrowed his eyes. What? Look at it. He gestured around the room again. There wasn't much to look at. Why would you choose this for the rest of time? Because you don't want me to pick it, I told him. If he was really God, he'd know what certain connotarian I could be. And I knew he was holding and hiding something. Trying to pretend like pride doesn't exist. There was something special about it. God scolded back fine. He let he led me over to the one of the workbenches in the center. There was a blank space, a blank empty void that went on forever. Here's your universe, he said. You've got seven days to get started. He took his seat at the bench next to me and went back to tinkering in his own world. After a long pause, he spoke to me finally again. You know, it might be nice for me to actually have some company for once. I'm